What's up guys, Louis Santana, Santana's Black Label, uh, Rebel 36, a host of other companies. Today, I'm giving you the quick and dirty on RV campers. Today, we're reviewing the CT262 BHS Expedition by Coleman with the K2 Summit Climate Package. So, if you're gonna spend upwards of $20,000 on a camping rig and you wanna take all your family out, there's gonna be some things that you're looking for and I'm sure you guys have already done your reviews. Today, I'm not gonna focus on all the things that you've probably already been seeing in the normal videos. What I'm gonna show you is all the logistical engineering that goes into these things that are either gonna make the decision for you whether you like it or you don't. Get ready, the quick and dirty is coming right now. All right, guys, I just took over the camera, and here's what I'm going to do. We're going to start back here in the bedroom. I'm going to give you a quick glance around. Obviously, we've got the master right here with a slider. And again, I'm not reviewing any of this stuff. You got the couch, which is made out of leather. You got the uh, dining table. You got the two bunks, bathroom all the way back there, and all the goodies. But let's slowly turn around, and let me show you the engineering part that I ran into that I thought, man, I really need to review this. So, for example... I am, as you saw in the video, about 5'8", and I'm about a 44-inch shoulder. Oh, there I am. Look at me. There we are. So I've got a, a nice muscular build, right? Not really a big belly. Here's the problem that I'm having already coming into the master bedroom. Number one, these things, if you notice right here, notice that that is screwed in. So that means you cannot take this off. The problem with a big guy like me, take a look at that. I'm going to do it at that height. If I'm coming in, I cannot come in because my hand is going to whack this thing every single time. So number one, I'm going to get some bruises up in there. Number two, I have the opportunity to probably bust it. So that right there is already going to be broken off before you can imagine if I owned this and I took it camping on a regular basis or if I rented it out. The other thing too is, take a look at that, not a lot of room for my feet. My shoulder is already hitting this thing right here, right? My shoulder's already hitting this, standing straight up. So not a lot of room, and so I'm not a big fan of that either. So at the end of the day, I just thought to myself that, man, you know, how do I sneak in here? The second thing, too, is this is a fairly new camper, and it's only been used a couple times, but look, here we go. It goes up, it goes down. It goes up, it goes down. It goes up, it goes down. So the problem is this thing's already broken, and it's not even, you know, even used. The other thing, too, is see those push pins right there? That one right there that are out of focus, those are push pins. And the way to get that wi that window open is by hitting a push pin on either side. For Coleman, what I noticed, those push pins made it extremely difficult to even get this window up. I'm a pretty big guy, 200 pounds, and I struggle trying to get those windows open. And of course, I'm not going to get any air now because this thing's broken, so you got to finagle this thing somehow to stay open. Kind of ridiculous for me. The one benefit of this particular bed here in this BHS model is that it does have a memory foam. So the memory foam was very nice and comfortable. I do appreciate that. They always remark about how much uh, storage you get underneath there. The problem is this bed is so stinking heavy. There's no way you're going to be able to get under there from the inside. You'll have to be outside to do it because even me as a 200 pound guy, this bed's got to weigh at least 65 pounds, maybe. There's no way anyone's going to be able to do this anytime easy. Bring your own pillows. The other thing, too, that I really didn't like about this particular model is the fact that right down here, again, no clearance. There's no way. I'm going to get one foot in there. Take a look at that. Look how much room that has taken. I could not even squash my duffel bag down there. Here's what happens, right? Logistically, you're probably with your partner, right? Uh, husband, wife, whatever, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, as you come in, this is the logical place to put a normal sized duffel. Well, now it's in your way and you're trying to squeeze in. I'm going sideways, guys. Well, how is the other partner going to get in? Because look, look at all the room and there's the foot of the bed. So now all of a sudden, they can't really utilize this side at all. I mean, they've got, this is actually not even storage. So that's a problem too. That's not a storage area, guys. That's just a big old huge nightstand that you can't do nothing with. So no storage right there. No door right there. So it's just this big block that doesn't allow you to get to the back of the bed. It does have your storage here, and you know that's fine and all. But again, you know, not really a good thing when it's 12 o'clock at night, you're wanting to come in, it's super dark, you're gonna have to pop the lights, use more battery, turn on the generator, do whatever. This thing's got a slider, which again is fine, and it works for what it's supposed to. It's okay, you know, but I'll tell you, from the bedroom side, we're already looking at some issues. Go in here. 
Now this thing says that it says um, rated for eight people to sleep. Well, you got two right there. You've got one there on each of the uh, bunk houses. You've got two more sitting right there for another couple for your dining room. But the problem that I had is, is that you've got these two things right here and this does not come apart, right? So if you have, let's say, four couples that all wanna come and hang out, some couple is going to have to sleep completely separate like if they're on a lounger because these loungers only go back. They don't go into a full lying down position. So it's like being at your Uncle Marty's house who said, hey, you guys, you couple can go ahead and take the couches. That means that no spooning, guys. <laughs> no getting close. It's just a matter of these two couple. This couple right here is going to be the couple you like the least. So I wasn't a big fan of that. I wouldn't really say that it sleeps eight. I think it sleeps six. On top of that, you've got this whole thing. The one thing I didn't like about these couches, let me show you something cool, right, as we're getting ready to break this down. So I'm sitting here on the couch. My buddies are way over there. <laughs> so, not a real big deal, especially if you have the music on. Music's going, of course, you know, they make it pretty decent. So you got your A speakers, B speakers. We are gonna talk about the C speakers in a minute. I mean, the sound was okay, but you're way over there. So there's no way you're gonna have the conversation. And just BTW, guys, the windows were all the same. Super difficult to open um, using those push pins. I was not a fan, so that was it. The one thing too, the, um, gosh, the air conditioner did a great job of cooling stuff down right in here and it got super cold. What I didn't like, and I'm gonna come right back into the bedroom, is that that little thing right there is supposed to get this place cool. It takes much, much longer, and I'm gonna do a little blow up right there. It takes much longer for that air because it's hardly blowing out here. So if it's hot in here, it's gonna continue to be hot for some time. You need to pre-plan to be able to make this cool. This place while in here is absolutely freezing. It's Arctic cold. So in one sense, it works really good. It must be the conduction and all of the stuff that's going here. We even closed this down so that way we could bypass and it still didn't blow cold air very quickly. So, so that's what you got right there. Um, obviously that is the case. In the Coleman, I did like the fact that the bunks are a little bit wider, so that was kind of cool. I really enjoyed that. I thought that was neat. The one thing I didn't like, again, I'm not a big guy, so for anybody that is over 5'8", anybody that's over 200 pounds, and I'm like literally about 195, if you try to sneak in here, right, your belly is hitting here at the table, right? Belly's already hitting at the table, and you're not even comfortable at all this thing this thing right here is pushing you into the table. So what I did is I just ripped it out. And so I ripped it out and that's how I finally sat down where I was comfortable. So again, the engineering on this pretty poor is what I would say. Uh, your quality of the build is pretty poor. The other thing too is you'll notice this thing again, brand new, right? Look at what I see there. Those are scratches. And they're scratches because what happens inevitably, if you're camping guys, nobody camps in a parking lot. But what happens is on these sliders, that little carpet comes up, rocks get under there, and then of course you don't know it, and then when you do the slider, that's what you have as a permanent reminder that you went camping. So not a big fan, this is after mopping, okay? So expect you to have a floor that's gonna be pretty jacked up because these guys obviously did not do a great job engineering how, <clears throat> how this slider was gonna come back. One last thing for you guys, um, as I come through here, it is the bathroom. Now, we've rented smaller trailers before, and let me tell you what, that door is closing, but um, we've rented smaller trailers before, but the bathrooms have been much larger. In this particular model, again, the 262 BHS by Coleman, this bathroom is ultra tiny. So not only do I need to squeeze my, and, and as I come through the door, just know that my 44 inch shoulder is touching both sides of the door. So again, it's the sideways shuffle getting into the bathroom. As I get in, look at that tiny little sink. It's it's pretty tiny, I mean it works and it suffices, so I wouldn't say that that's necessarily a bad thing. But here's my biggest problem, right? You've got a secondary door here, so again, that's cool if you guys are having a barbecue, you don't want anybody entering the living quarters, maybe people are sleeping already. But here's the deal, so they make this cool thing that looks like a roundabout, right? Supposedly supposed to give you more room. But notice where it's mounted, right? It's mounted this much already into the shower. So any benefit that you get from the round is actually not gonna be beneficial because they should have mounted it here, right? So again, pretty poor engineering on Coleman's part. 
Not only that, it's freaking hot as heck. There's no cover. So if that sunshine, which is coming down right now, it's hot in here. No way to cover that, no way to allow it. And literally, guys, if you look here, there's no window. Like, I mean, you the only way to get a window is by popping the door open and letting the whole entire universe know that you're going to uh, shower. So, again, pretty poor design on Coleman's part. I'm going to step up in the shower, and this is going to be one of our last little pieces. Um, as I step into the shower, <laughs> again, 5'8", and I am about this far from the... Uh, the height of the thing right the problem with that is anybody that's going to be a little taller six foot six foot two normal size right i'm like average for my the year that i was born i feel like andre the giant in here i feel like a giant giant person and i shouldn't feel that way i'm a little bit big right a 200 pounder is not necessarily a small guy but at the end of the day i shouldn't feel like this my nose is like look at look at this this is right here this is a low profile cap that I have on, by the way. So it's not a high cap. I'm already at the top of this. On top of that, you got this brace right here that was built in. So you cannot freehandly take off the wand. So now the wand is completely stuck and look where it's aiming. It's aiming right outside. So you got to make sure this shower comes all the way back or else you're going to get water everywhere. And when you do finally take it off, it's stuck right here. So you're, that's as much room as I get. Um, not really great for rinsing off. So again, poor job on Coleman's part. So not a big fan. I'm all the way up here. I had to take a huge step up. If you have older relatives that want to um, really enjoy this uh, <laughs> trailer, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. All right, final piece. We're going to cover the outside and get you guys out of here. But I wanted to share that with you because... Truly, again, you're spending $20,000 on a rig. You should be able to spend it on a rig that's going to be good. I'm going to show you just a couple more things and we're done. So my Generation 1 Toyota uh, is a 4x4. Take a look at that. It's already sagging. So at this point, this thing is huge. And we've unloaded all the gray, unloaded all of the fresh. This K2 package right here, I live in Arizona. All it acts as really is just an extra weight. It's not really doing anything beneficial. So if you live in a regular average climate temperature, if you're not in colder areas, that little K2 Summit package is gonna cost you probably, I don't know, five, $6,000 more. And on top of that, it really doesn't help. Caution, by the way, a little extra piece for you. See that little bar bell right here? That right there is a torsion bar and you can actually connect it. See how it's got another one right here? Okay, so you got the torsion bar here, you got the torsion bar here. It's got one bar that actually will do it and then you basically tighten it. What that does, that acts as a, makes almost your truck and the trailer one piece. I personally would advise against it because what it does, it stiffens the ride so much that if you get any wind resistance on the trailer, the truck also wants to follow. So not a great thing. I'm actually going to use it with only the sway bars. I'm not using the torsion control. So that's going to be it. Last little piece right here, guys. This is how I'm going to end it. Check it out. That, that's your um, <laughs> storage on the inside. Again, this is this, which slides out, right? This is inside the bedroom. But dude, take a look at that. Poorly made. This is just plywood that you can get anywhere. Look at the angle. The angle of departure. So at the end of the day, now not only is this thing not flush, it, look at that huge gap. And then on top of that, you can't stick anything in there. So again, it totally makes it so that at the end of the day, and I'm going to run you around the back. Obviously, you got your double axle, not a bad thing. But it makes it so that way you can't really, you know, utilize the space intended. Final thing is on your um, on your hoses for the gray water, black water. I don't know if this is normal or not, but we noticed that it's pretty short. So let's say, for example, you're out in the boonies and all you're going to do is want to dump your fresh or you want to run fresh water. And that's what I would suggest, guys. If you're going to drop gray, run about five gallons of fresh through it with a nice citrus, some type of uh, smell to it so that your trailer always smells fantastic. The gentleman that we rented it from, bless his heart, he's a really super great guy. Whoever rented it before him um, actually left some gray water in there and therefore it begins to stink. And so it's just not a great thing. And we feel that this hose is way too short. So this hose probably should run the full length of your trailer so you can drop it past and maybe even make an area for it so that way you're not dropping it directly under so everybody can smell your gray water and your beautiful citrus water that you're running behind. Other than that, those are the things that I see. But uh, this is the 262 BHS by Coleman. 
All right, guys, so that's my review of the 262 BHS by Coleman. In my opinion, don't spend the money on such a huge rig. It's super heavy. My Generation 1 with a 4.7 liter V8 that can tow 8,500 pounds struggled when it was full of gray, or I'm sorry, full of fresh water. And then once obviously it gets full of black, it's going to be a pain to tow. Not only that, it's just got so much extra room in the living room, you really don't need it. And then they take shortcuts both in the bathroom and the master bedroom that aren't worth it. Look for something that's an extra light and something that'll probably tow a little bit better, especially with these days that we're running V6s and smaller V8s. So anyway, that's Louis Santana with a quick and dirty. If you like this video, make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe. We're going to continue to hit quick and dirty videos, obviously. Uh, reviews of all kinds of neat things because of the promotional company and the gourmet foods company we have. So thanks for hanging in there and we'll see you guys next time.